Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. It's Reed, and in today's video, we're gonna talk everything about acreages. Now, I'm diving back into this topic because my previous video, this one up here in the corner, I shot that in one of my first few videos on my channel, and as of late, it's been getting some of the most attention on the channel, and I think it's a perfect time to revisit it with some better footage, with some drone footage, and clean up the fact that there was music playing during the audio. So if you've been wondering what it takes or what things you should consider when buying an acreage near Calgary, Alberta, this video is for you, so let's dive right in. Okay, item number one. Now the first thing, and I talk about this whether it's an acreage or another home, the most important thing is location. Just because you're gonna get a great view doesn't necessarily mean that that is the right place for you. If you are one of the fortunate group they get to work from home now location the only thing you're really considering there is how far you're gonna to have to go to get groceries how far you're gonna to have to go to get to a hospital or if you have kids schools so those things are all really important but the biggest thing to the location and this applies to the majority of people is what's your commute time going to be how far are you willing to commute in the morning and in the evening to your place of employment and to just focus on what that's like on dry summer roads is a kind of a short-sighted thing, especially as winter's approaching here. We really need to focus on how far you're willing to drive in adverse road conditions. So taking into account the acreage's location, yes, obviously the views you'd like and the type of lot, whether it be treed or open or prairie fields, whether you want rolling hills, all of that stuff plays into account. But the biggest one is, how much time you're willing to spend on the road if you have to commute to a job. Okay, point number two, keeping in the whole location kind of realm, the next one is gonna be availability of services. Now, being that you are more rural, depending on your municipality, we don't have access to the same type of services that you do inside major towns or cities. First things first, we don't have garbage pickup. So you're gonna to have to store your garbage on your property, whether it be a portable bin or just in your own garbage cans, and then likely take it to a transfer site, either weekly or whatever schedule you have set up. So that's just one extra thing that services based on your location is gonna be changed. The next big thing is, depending on where you are, your natural gas may be part of a gas co-op. I'm currently on one, and if you're looking to buy an acreage west of Calgary, kind of north of Bragg Creek, all the way up to about Sundry, you're gonna be part of Cochrane Lakes Gas Co-op. So you're not gonna even have an option on which gas provider you're gonna choose. That's just chosen for you based on the area that you move to. Finally, the biggest one, obviously electrical, it's gonna be there unless you're on a super off-grid property, which in that case, that's a whole nother video, is internet and cell phone service. Now for years living out on my acreage, I went with a radio type internet service where we had a satellite dish pointed at a radio tower. While it worked okay, I just recently upgraded to Starlink. And if it was up to me, I would just recommend you get Starlink right off the bat. If you're in a treat area, Starlink's gonna be your only option because you're not gonna have radio signal. You'll just have to make sure your Starlink will have adequate view of the sky. I myself have a pretty clear lot in the front half and even still my speeds, you'll see them on the screen here, went from dismal at best to phenomenal, which should really help my business when I'm talking with clients on phone calls or uploading content to this channel here. So if good internet is something you're looking for, bite the bullet, just buy Starlink. I know it's expensive, it's gonna be worth it. Okay, now point number three, we're gonna dive into the buying process a little bit and there's gonna be some added costs to buying an acreage property. Now, right off the bat, you're gonna look at your extra time driving around all these properties. If you're doing what we did and setting a pretty large radius and then trying to see everything in your budget range, you're gonna spend a lot of time in the car racking up a lot of dollars. And I don't think that that is small enough of a number to ignore. You are gonna spend a lot of money in gas trying to find that perfect acreage. And that's okay because it's going to be worth it in the long run. Now, in terms of your costs when buying an acreage property, the big main increase in costs is going to be inspections. Not only are you going to have your standard home inspection, which likely is going to be more expensive because of the travel time for the inspector, and more expensive if you want that inspector to look at any shops, accessory garages, or bigger outbuildings, 
but it's also going to be very important for you buying an acreage to get the well inspected and the septic system inspected. Now the well and septic system obviously is how you get your water and how you get your sewer dealt with while you're on the acreage. And those things are very, very, very expensive to repair later on. And the extra $1,200 to $1,500 that you're going to spend on those two inspections is very worth it instead of having to, say, drill a new well for $15,000 or redo your septic system for $30 to $50. So I highly recommend doing these inspections just for your peace of mind. And again, it's a very, very small cost when compared to the replacement cost down the line. Item number four, we're going to talk about the different styles of property. Now, when you're looking at an acreage, obviously land use is going to be very important. What are you looking to buy your acreage for? Are you wanting a larger lot just to give you a bigger yard for a couple of dogs and your kids to play? Or are you looking to get into a little bit more of a homesteader style life where you've got a big garden, greenhouse, maybe some chickens and maybe some small livestock? Those two needs are so different that we're really going to have to look at different style properties to do that. Smaller multi acres, like one to three country residential style estate acreages are more plentiful. Whereas if you're looking for that 10 to 15, maybe 20 ish acres for the small hobby farm or little homestead area, depending on the municipality you're in, those are more difficult to find. And you're probably going to have to extend your search radius a little bit bigger in order to find what you're looking for. The other big thing when you're talking about land use is, is the land rolling? Is it flat? Is it heavily treed? Or is it mostly open? On top of that, what surrounds you? Is there crops around you? Is there cattle around you? Are you comfortable with crops and the potential for spraying around you? Or are you comfortable with large scale cattle operations near you? Those things are all gonna have an effect on the actual use of the property. And so those are things that are very important to keep in mind. Okay, point number five. And this one's gonna be kind of fun, but really important as well. There is added costs to all the equipment and maintenance items that you're gonna need on the acreage. Now, we've talked about the commute earlier on, so you're gonna to have to factor in your you know, wear and tear on your vehicles, extra maintenance, you're gonna go through tires quicker, you're gonna be driving more kilometers for anything you do, whether it be work or groceries. So you're gonna to have to pay attention to how many you know, kilometers you're willing to put on a vehicle before you're wanting to upgrade, and that's gonna be a big cost consideration for you as well. Next, hey, you're gonna be in the acreage, we've talked about this in the commute, do you drive a Prius? Or are you one of the ones that are driving a pickup truck or a four wheel drive SUV? Obviously those are two very different vehicles. And I make that joke a little bit lightly here in that in the winter, if it snows a foot, having an electric vehicle where maybe you have power outages out rurally or you know nowhere to really charge your vehicle, that might not be the best option for you. Whereas if you live rurally, a gas or diesel engine is obviously more reliable, there's more, areas to find for fuel and the four wheel drive bigger SUVs and trucks are going to handle those winter conditions more effectively. So if you don't have the bigger, more rural ready vehicle, that could be another cost to you. Now, in terms of equipment, if you have a property with trees, you're going to need a chainsaw to deal with some of those trees, whether they blow down in the wind or you're cutting down dead ones. And no, I don't think your Canadian Tire Special Ryobi chainsaw is really going to handle the use you're going to put it through. And you're going to need something a little bit bigger to take down those bigger dead trees in your yard and save you from paying a tree service to do that. The other side is if you have a few acres to mow, like I do here, you're obviously not going to want to walk along behind a push mower for hours and hours and hours. Getting a ride on tractor, a bigger mower is going to be more beneficial and it can be double as your snow removal in the winter because yeah, we have a lot of winter here and a lot of snow and that's going to be a very important piece of equipment. So all of those different pieces of equipment can really add up and they kind of compound because when you move in, you're like, okay, I've got my new house. I got my new I want new furniture, you know, we had to upgrade a vehicle. Oh, now I need a chainsaw. Now I need a new weed whipper. Now I need something to remove snow. Now I need a better lawnmower. And all of those things really start to add up and can be pretty stressful in the first few years of buying an acreage. With all that being said, I think it's really important to dive into those topics, mention some of those things just to kind of prepare you for buying an acreage near Calgary. And then once you're prepared and you have all that in mind, 
that leads us into the fun part where we can start shopping for properties. Now, the last thing I'm gonna leave you with in this video, and I would consider it a bit more of like a bonus tip um, from my own personal experience. When I bought my acreage five years ago, I used a realtor as I was not licensed at that time that I had used on previous deals. Now, I really enjoyed working with him. He's still a good friend of mine to this day, but at the time he did not himself live on an acreage. And if I were to do it over again or give a recommendation, it would be to not use an agent or a realtor to buy an acreage property that doesn't themselves live on one. And the biggest reason there is you're gonna have questions about septic systems and how they work. What happens when you have a power outage? Spoiler alert, you don't have running water because your well shuts down. So, hey, do you wanna spend an extra 10 grand on a backup generator? Or are there other alternatives? Or, you know, is there bus routes? How does mail work? Do you have a community mailbox or do you have to go to the post office? There's a whole bunch of little things about living a rural lifestyle or living on an acreage that really can only be answered by somebody who does. And so if you're looking for an acreage and you are looking for somebody who also lives on an acreage that can help you in that search and give you some of that advice, I'd love to help you out. I'd love to help you find the perfect acreage for you around Calgary and help you transition to living a more rural lifestyle if that's something that you're looking for. Thanks. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, drop a comment down below. Tell me what the most important point that I mentioned in this video was and what you think is the most important. And on top of that, throw a like, throw a subscribe. It really helps me out. And until then, I will see you in the next one.